Hi, and welcome to another Flutter programming. Uh, and for today, I'm going to talk about pagination in Flutter. So, for example, the application, the following application, where we have buyer page to list items from the database. So the buyer page basically able to list item as a page uh, and there are 26 item found from the database. And the pagination here works uh, through just a simple pagination where each page is basically divided or is being separated by 20, 20 item per page. Um, in this example, we have uh, two pages with 26 items and user can select each of the page directly from the page index at the bottom. So for example, when we click on the second page here, so the remaining of the product basically able to be loaded and display here. So how do we manage or how do we implement pagination in Flutter or simple pagination in Flutter? So there are a few steps required. Uh, and here we can see that uh, for the user interface, what we need to update or what we require here is the bottom section here, the bottom widget that handle for the pagination. So uh, from the codes, uh, we have uh, the main screen dot dot that basically handle uh, the, the buyer page. Um, and there are a few updates required from, from our previous class. Um, one thing to, to, to note is that the load product widgets here uh, will require additional uh, parameter, which is the page number. And the page number is being used to pass to the back end so that the back end will know what page to load from the database. So here the load product will pass page number and there are a few parameter here that will be required to update. Uh, for example, uh, the current page that the, um, the page is at, which is comes from page number and the number of total pages that basically uh, written by the, the API. So uh, the API basically requested through the load all products.php with two passing parameter search and also page number. Uh, and once uh, the parameter uh, passed to the server script, the following server script, which basically will handle the pagination uh, that required by the application. And for example, here we can see um, the paging um, start from here, uh, where it require a result per page. And this application uh, use static paging, uh, which we have to set the number of item per page um, in uh, through the uh, load all product.php. So for example, if I set the product uh, or per page items, only 10 items per page, um, the application will load the item again, one item per page. So we can see when we change a result per page to 10. So now the paging turn into three pages and it will basically load 10 item per page. Uh, the page number here basically retrieve from our page number uh, URI. 
uh, and then we need to convert this to integer number and uh, then we need to get the page first result which actually um, the result uh, from page number uh, minus one uh, and also times result per page uh, and this basically will return our page first result However, the query uh, that we perform here remain the same uh, because we need to get the total number of product first from the first query. So here we load everything, for example, like sell all, select all from table product, order by product date, or the other one that's selling all from table product where product name like search, where we have the like statement in our SQL. Um, and then uh, we implement as usual uh, the connection with the query. However, the first query will only what we need only the number of result or the total number of result without having to fetch any of the um, rows from the query. So the reason is that we need the information later on to pass back to our client to the, our application. Uh, and also here we are going to use this to get the number of page through ceiling function where we get the number of result let's say 26 uh, divided by number of page 10 which will return 2.6 and by the use of ceiling it will always return 3 so no matter how many like for example uh, the number of result written 21 divided by 10 uh, the ceiling for uh, 21 it will always be 3 uh, and then once we have the number of page number of result uh, we're going to update our SQL uh, which will include the limit statement so the limit statement here will allow us to load the index or the starting index uh, for the first page result, which is uh, the index number um, that based on the uh, on this uh, page first result. So this basically uh, limit our query instead of having to load everything. So we lead, we we load based on the on the index where we want it to start, and then how many items that we like to to load. So if 20, so it will return 20 items. If 10, it will only return 10 items from this query. And then we re-execute the result and then we should be able to retrieve um, the latest or the updated SQL based on the limit statement. The rest basically the same. This is where we get or retrieve all the data and push into our product array. So I've talked about this before in the previous video, so you should check that out. Uh, the only update that I added here is that uh, the number of page and also number of result that I put it into the response so that the application will be able to retrieve these two information. Uh, even though you can actually get the information from the product array, from the product length, that can also be used to retrieve the number of product array but but the problem with this method is that you can only retrieve the maximum like for example 10 item 10 items so that's why i still i use the number of result which will always return the true number of result from the application from the uh, from the initial query all right, so that basically for the number of page and also the back end for the uh, load all product. So once we have the back end ready, um, and then the rest basically just to be able to retrieve the data by using num of page and num of result so that we can get number of page and then number of result that, that retrieve through our JSON data written JSON data. All right, so the rest basically um, same with the previous one, uh, but here I added um, some progress dialogue, uh, but 
when you added any UI element into loot products or in the init uh, initial or method that being called from init, um, you're going to have problem with uh, being able to load that. Um, and one thing or one trick that you can use, like for example, here through the init state, uh, if we did not introduce any UI element to the load product, you should be, should be able to load this easily with no problem. However, if you have called something or you load any uh, UI element, uh, the problem is going to arise and then you're going to end up with error. Uh, and that can be solved by adding this widget binding instant at, uh, from uh, uh, post frame callback and that allow us to load product information uh, without having to worry about uh, the UI element that is available in the load product. Okay, because uh, this uh, widget binding will initialize or will uh, execute uh, the build method first or build the UI first uh, before load the product and then you don't have much problem uh, later on with the load product. All right, so that's for pagination, a very simple pagination methods, and then you can just implement that in your application. Uh, the UI part where we have the page number basically implemented through this size bar. Okay, so this is the size bar that implement uh, the UI section down here. So the size bar basically set through list builder. I think it's believe can be removed, uh, but yeah. It basically implemented through list builder, list view builder through the uh, scroll direction implemented by axis horizontal, which means that uh, the bottom um, text button down here that that automatically uh, create uh, through the use of uh, builder. So, for example, if you have three, you should be able to load three. So, let me just try per item uh, five and try to reload that one more time. All right, so that basically allow you to have more page number. So here we can see that there are six page number here, uh, and this basically uh, occupy the whole uh, width of the, of the screen. Uh, and let me just further reduce that to four, just to be able to see uh, the effect of that. All right, so now you should be able to see the scrolling action, which is implemented through scroll direction axis horizontal. All right, so that basically allow you to have that, but that will left your uh, page with only four items per page because we we practically set it, we, we set the item per page only four. So let me return back to 10. And then... Um, the item will return back, or the the page will return back to ten, uh, and then uh, the page only left with three. So that uh, basically implemented through list view builder, which will require to return here. This down here is a text button, and the text button automatically selected through this uh, if statement, uh, where any current page will be colored. So like, for example, current page is two, or let's say current page is three, that basically or automatically colored through the if statement and check the current page if it is basically equal to the current index. However, we need to minus one due to the index will always start at zero so that we have to minus one so that we can get back to its current index. So the current page um, will set to the color red and other than that, we'll set the color to black. Uh, and then this is just to rebuild or build the uh, each of the button based on the index number. So each of the uh, buttons here are, will implement load product uh, and load product which require passing to item. Uh, to passing parameter, which is the search text and also with the index and Definitely, we need to add back one to the index. All right, so that basically uh, implemented through this um, simple size box, and now you have yourself pagination. All right, so it's a very rather simple process to implement, but sometimes it can be 
quite hard if you did not or unable to uh, to to true truly understand um, how this actually works from the back end perspective and from the front end perspective all right so to be able to loot pagination however this is not uh, uh, this is not the um, favorite method of doing pagination um, there are also some other method or some other pagination methods that that you can use such as a dynamic uh, pagination which is you can just use scrolling Okay, you keep them scrolling and then scrolling and load the next data. You scroll again, load the next data. So I call that basically a dynamic pagination uh, where it basically similar to Facebook where you can just scroll and scroll and scroll which allow you to load more data or get more data uh, from it. So here just by using static pagination just or simple pagination by click uh, the page number so that you can retrieve items. So uh, you can you can check uh, my GitHub page and take a look at the codes and try to implement in your own project. Okay, so I think that's all for pagination for Flutter programming uh, in this session. So see you. Bye bye.